Okay, here we have uh, the Milkish Inlet number one covered bridge, Bayswater Bridge it's called. Uh, built in 1920, it's 100 years old uh, last year. And this bridge had uh, a rating of five tons. At the turn of the century, it had been designed for 12 tons. And it's a Howe truss covered, a covered bridge typical to New Brunswick. Where the early designers, they realized that if they kept the connectors dry, this covered bridge would last a long time. And that's exactly what happened. Because over time, the cover kept the bridge, all the connectors in the bridge kept them dry, and the bridge lasted a long time. So the province decided that they wanted to have an increase in the capacity of the bridge to 30 tons. And um, TRS, Timber Restoration Services, was able to be a successful bidder in that opportunity and set upon the job of uh, restoring the bridge to a 30 ton capacity. The restoration involved lifting the bridge up and restoring its original camber which had been designed to be 88 millimeters and after dead load that camber would have dropped to about 50 or 45 millimeters and so the idea was we'll put a a long reinforced girder uh, lift assembly in the bridge and we'll put a threaded rod down through the deck and attach to the floor beams and lift up the whole bridge and restore its camber and that's what happened and they were able to restore it uh, in its lifted position and basically increase its camber up to 40 or 50 millimeters, increase its capacity to 30 tons. And they achieved that by restoring the elements that were um, decayed or degraded and also applying high strength fiber. And this fiber that was used on the bottom of the tension cords was five times the strength of steel at one fifth the dead weight and it came in a long roll, and we unrolled the high strength fiber and adhered it to the bottom of the tension cord in its lifted state, and then that allowed these uh, tension cords to be reinforced in situ and uh, increase their ca capacity significantly. After this was completed, uh, there were other works completed on the bridge, the uh, restoration of the webs, for example, and the compression cords were re restored as well and the whole bridge had a new deck placed in it. The floor beams were removed and new floor beams were put down with new deck uh, to totally revamp the bridge and increase its capacity from five tons to 30. Restore the bridge to go another 100 years from the 100 that's already there. And the interesting features about this bridge, of course, are the fact that the wood in this bridge, old wood at the turn of the century, uh, 1920, sawn and put into this bridge, the wood in those sawn timbers probably was 200 years at the time it was used. So wood dating back to early 1700s, pre-1700s days is in this bridge today, still in service for the community. And this whole bridge is sequestering carbon. It's a negative carbon sink. It stores carbon for us and keeps it out of the atmosphere. And it's restored in this here bridge at uh, Milkish Inlet number one. So a great carbon friendly, aesthetically friendly, strength wise friendly for the community for service to get snow plows and emergency vehicles across it now and still in life for the community and its service. A great way to close uh, cross the gap uh, using the old bridge restored uh, to 30 tons to continue to serve the community.